Hello and welcome to In Defense of the Traditional Martial Arts. The video you just watched is of one of my former Tai Chi instructors, Dan Doherty, who sadly passed away this year. It was during the 80s at Southeast Asian Full Contact Competition that he went on to win. And I'll post a link to the original video in the comments. In that video, there's a comment from a guy saying that he practiced Tai Chi for a whole four years. As we all know, that's nothing in the grand scheme of things for Tai Chi practice. Anyway, in a comment, he says that there's no Tai Chi displayed in that video. Um, I mean, we're lucky to have the footage didn't have smartphones back then, you're lucky to have any sort of video camera present. But, you know, even with good footage, when we see a real fight at full speed, it's hard to see the skill. So what we have to do is slow it down a bit. So in that first image, what you saw is an example. In the classics, it says something along the lines of when my opponent advances, the distance seems surprisingly long. Maybe Dan's like <laughs> uh, making the distance a bit too long, you could argue, but the attack doesn't get anywhere near Dan. So if we have a look at that again, you'll see. So this next video shows that when the opponent retreats, the distance seems surprisingly short. Dan lands some punches. And in the last section, I mean, you could describe this in any number of ways. You know, he's leading his opponent into the void. You can say that at the moment, the opponent is Yang as he's launching his attack. Dan moves to a yin position once his opponent is fully extended and into the void the opponent then becomes yin Dan then counters with a yang attack and drops the guy you can also say that Dan used fajin which is just explosive like power to uh, kinetic energy to knock his opponent out you've got to have fajin if you're going to knock someone out you could also say that he used Lee spiraling force. It's you know it's a it's a hook punch. It's a application of turning the tiger's head. I've done a video on that. You know you can it's any amount of ways you can describe it as Tai Chi using Tai Chi principles. So the last thing I want to say, and if you are watching this uh, guy that commented, you know, Tai Chi, when it all said and done, I mean, it is more of a counter-attacking martial art, as is shown by Dan Doherty, how he uses it in this fight. But it is fighting. You know, in, in fighting you have, like, kickboxing range, you have, like, wrestling range, and you have... Groundwork, which unfortunately in Tai Chi you don't really have the, the groundwork side of things. At least it's not very well taught. So, fighting is fighting. Whether it's Tai Chi, whether it's boxing, whether it's judo. You know, a fight is a fight. It's not going to look clean. You know, you might see videos of like um, teachers doing nice flow and movements, touching their students and their students like jumping around like they're being electrocuted. But they're not going to do that against an opponent trying to knock their heads off. Dan put his money where his mouth was, went out, fought and won these competitions against people that had boxing experience, that had full contact experience, that were Kung Fu practitioners, other Tai Chi practitioners. You know, he did it. And he was one of the best at doing it in this modern age. So, yeah, Tai Chi, when it's used for real, surprisingly, looks like fighting. 